Welcome to this series that I'm calling Modular Makeover, where we take a module and we turn it into something completely different. We're going to start today with the beloved Qubit Bloom module, and we are going to change it inside and out. We're going to write a new firmware for it, change how it looks. We're going to turn it from this into this. I'm calling this new firmware Blossom. And if you've got the Daisy version of the Qubit Bloom and you'd like to try out this firmware, you can do that. It's available. You can find the link in the description down below there. Of course, while you're down there, if you're so inclined, please like this video and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more of these. If you'd just like to see a demo of the firmware, you can jump ahead to that in the chapters. Otherwise, I'm going to take you on a journey in this video of how I did this, and you can follow along with what the process has been like. Here we go. All right, so what is the Bloom? Bloom is a really interesting module from Qubit Electronics. It's a generative sequencer, so it generates sequences of music, and it does so in a really unique way. It makes a melody, and then it makes a whole set of branching versions of mutations or changes, variations on that melody, and it allows you to kind of traverse through that uh, branching tree. I'm really interested in generative sequencing. It's one of the things that drew me to Eurorack in the first place. If you have uh, VCV Rack, the kind of software Eurorack simulator, you may have come across the generative sequencer that I've made under the brand Seaside Modular. It's called Proteus. And it's kind of similar to the Bloom in that it makes melodies and it repeats them. The Bloom is really interesting, but it's also kind of quirky. It's got some unique features um, and it hasn't really been updated too much recently. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that there's two hardware modules, two hardware versions of the module. There's an older one that uh, Cubic calls the F7 version and then there's a newer one which is the DAISY version and runs on the embedded DAISY platform that the people behind Qubit have created. And because of those two different hardware versions, I think it's been tricky for them to decide how to move forward with it. But we don't have that problem. We can try and update it ourselves. And that's what we're going to do. So Daisy has a code library that anyone can access. And some of the module makers that use the Daisy platform have actually made versions of their code or pieces of their code available to allow the community to develop, like noise engineering is done with the Versio platforms and others, for example. Qubit themselves have done this with the uh, Aurora and with Nebulae, but they haven't done it for Qubit Bloom. There's no header file out there that allows you to code for the Bloom if you want to. So that means it's going to be a little bit tricky for us to do that. We're going to have to figure out that part. We're going to have to do a little bit of reverse engineering. We need to figure out how each element on the panel is connected to the Daisy Seed. We need to know which pins those potentiometers and encoders and tactile switches and LEDs are all connected to and how they're connected up so that we can control them. We need to figure out how we can read from the gate and CV inputs and of course how we can write to the outputs ourselves. So this is going to take a little bit of detective work on our part. It's going to take some trial and error and of course some good old fashioned inspection of the circuit board. There were some complications here. We came across a couple of multiplexers and LED controllers in between the components in the seed that we had to figure out, but nothing a little trial and error and some poking around in the circuitry couldn't conquer. All right, we have rested control of the bloom. We can now control all of the inputs and outputs. We can read from the knobs. We can detect the clicks of the encoders. I've created a header file that's going to allow anyone who wants to, to write code for the Qubit Bloom. And the people at Qubit have graciously allowed me to share this with you. So this is available on my GitHub. And again, you can find the link in the description below if you'd like to try your hand at writing some code for the Bloom. I'm also making the code for my firmware completely open source and available. So now that we have control of the Bloom, what are we going to do with it? Now, I didn't want to make a, an exact copy of the Bloom firmware. The unique features that it has, the branching tree, those are qubits and they're really great. I'm not trying to copy them. I wanted to do something a little bit different here. And the main goal that I had in writing this firmware was to make it very, very simple, easy to use, very, very playable. 
I wanted a lot of feedback. One of the things that I had difficulty with on the Bloom was dialing in precise sequences. I didn't feel like it had enough feedback for me and I could never quite remember all of the different button combinations. So we're gonna keep this simple. I'm gonna reduce the number of channels from two to one. So instead of creating two sequences like the Bloom did, Blossom is only gonna create one sequence. And instead it's gonna have a bunch of other outputs outputs that allow you to modulate that sequence in various ways. The other thing is that I'm going to give a lot of visual and auditory feedback. So when you turn the knobs, I'd like to hear the new note immediately as I make it. And I'm also going to provide some visual feedback where the color of the LED actually reflects the pitch of the note. That's going to help us to dial in sequences. Second thing is we're, we're not going to try to do too much. I'm not going to pack in as many features as possible. Once we've got a sequence, I want it to mutate. I want it to change to have some life. And I'd also like to have some control over that mutation. We want to control how much, how quickly it's mutating and also the range of new notes that are generated when a new note is substituted into the melody. One of the things that people are frustrated with with, blue, with the blooms that it would quickly drift into higher and higher octaves. Of course, with a full modular makeover, we have to change how the thing looks too. We're gonna to make a new faceplate, and I did this using a PCB. I just took a picture of the Bloom faceplate and designed around that in Adobe Illustrator, brought it into KiCad and made a PCB. Shipped the plans for that up to a PCB manufacturer, and they sent me this panel, which became the new front panel for Blossom. I switched out the black knobs that were on there. They were black Rogan knobs. Instead, I've got some red CFAM knobs that I ordered from Thonk. All of the details on the materials that I used to make this panel are on the GitHub page in case you want to make your own. For example, you've got to make sure to put these little light pipes in so that the LEDs make their way, make the light from the LEDs makes their way to the surface. All right, let's do a run through of how this new alternative firmware called Blossom actually works. First thing to note about Blossom is that it's going to advance one step at a time every time it receives a trigger to its clock input. It's not going to calculate the tempo at all. It's just advancing whenever it gets a clock. So that means your rhythm can be uneven if you want it to be. You can adjust the pitch of each step by turning the encoder and you'll hear the pitch as you change it. It sends a gate signal out as well as changing the pitch. You can do this while the clock is running or, or while it's stopped. The notes are going to stay in scale. They're quantized. If you want a note from outside the scale, you can press in and turn the encoder. This here used to be the reset button and now it's the new melody button. You can toggle the muted state of each note by clicking on the encoder for that step. The old channel button is now a save button, so it's going to save the melody. To recall the saved melody, you press and hold the new melody button. If you want to return Blossom to its default state, you can press and hold the channel, uh, former channel, now save button. And that's going to give you a new set of settings and uh, your new melody is going to be all C notes. The color of the LED also indicates the pitch of the note. Save melody, it also remembers which notes were muted. And 
This knob here controls the probability that a new note is going to be muted. When it's all the way to the left, the probability of uh, rest notes is zero. When it's all the way to the right, you're going to get very, very few notes. This also controls the probability that new notes that come because of mutations are rests. This note here controls the range this knob controls the range of new notes, and it really only has two positions. To the left of uh, noon, your notes are constrained to one single bass octave. To the right of noon, the notes are allowed to travel up one octave or down one octave from that bass. At the bottom, we have several uh, outputs that can be used for modulation. The accent output outputs a trigger on some percentage of the notes. And the velocity output is a random voltage from 0 to 5 volts. Here, I'm going to plug the velocity output into the cutoff of a filter. You can change the length of a sequence by holding down the shift button and turning the first encoder. The orange lights indicate the length of the sequence. And you can toggle the follow mode by holding shift and clicking the last encoder. Alright, this is the mutation knob. It controls the probability that a single note will mutate at the end of the cycle. If you keep this knob all the way to the left, you get almost no mutations. If you turn it all the way clockwise, your melody is going to continually change. Okay, we're now going to plug a trigger into the reset jack. The trigger here sends the sequence back to the first step. And we're going to set this rhythm to an odd division. So we change the scale. We hold down the shift and we turn the second encoder and you can traverse through the scales. I'm going to put the list of scales on the screen right now. Thank you. 